All right, everyone, welcome back to another Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes video with Fat Phil. And today, we're going to be taking a look at the new Imperial Remnant, or as they're calling it in game, Peridia Patrol Assault Battle. We're going to be comparing this to the current Duel of the Fates. How do the rewards stack up? What's the difference between these things? Is one better than the other? Wait, you know, there's a lot of factors to consider here. It's not just cut and drive out, look at the reward. There's a lot of underlying things that we need to take a look at. So we're going to be analyzing this for you all today. Let's give a shout out to our channel members for their continued support. If you're ever interested, link down below, along with a link to the Discord server. Go check it out. We're very animated today. Um, no, thank you guys again for keeping the faith, for making this community as awesome as it is. You all are a huge part of the Fat Phil family, whether you are on the council or... You've been granted the rank of Jedi Master or Wampa. Thank you again for keeping the faith. I love you all so much. Let's get into our video here. Let's talk about this new assault battle. All right, so the first iteration of this new assault battle will be happening at the time of recording in about five days, the Peridia Patrol. Um, rewards are very similar to the Duel of the Face with three massive changes. We can now earn Kyratech, and there's a chance at Omicron Materials. Those are new additions that are added to this Peridia Patrol Assault Battle that were missing previously. So I do want to make sure that that is something we note, that the rewards are different, right? Um, now, just to show you the different tiers here, this was stolen from my Discord server, right? Someone took a picture of this as the you know, rewards there. Um... So what you can see is that tier four of the um, Peridia Patrol, you can get your either one of these two Kyratech. I'm, the, the way the rewards have always worked, and it's like either one or the other. Tier five, you're going to earn a chance at some relic materials. I'm not sure the breakup here. I don't know if it's like one of these pieces plus signal data or one of these, one of these and signal data because the, the grouping there is very different. When you go to the like Duel of the Fates here, you can get a tier where there is like carbonite circuit boards, bronzium wiring, you know, Relic 1 stuff to Relic 6 stuff. And then there's a Relic 7 and 8 tier, right? You guys can see that again here that, you know, there's this like Relic 7 and 8 tier and then the Relic 9 tier. Um, so there's three Relic tiers in Duel of the Fates. There's only two here, so I'm not sure how that breakup works, but they did add Kyratech. So that is a change. And then in tier 6, they did add Omicrons, which in tier six of Duel of the Fates, it's either Gerda keypads or droid brains. So rewards, again, changed a bit between these two. We'll kind of break it down all in the video here of, you know, which one I think is better because there are some, you know, factors to consider here. So let's break it down here. Let's get into our video. Let's, I guess get into the video. Let's get out of it more introduction. So the big thing with Duel of Fates, it is only two characters. We only need Master Qui-Gon and Padawan Obi-Wan. But they need their queen. They Obviously, they can use the Jedi Tag or Galactic Republic. But realistically, they want to be with Queen Amidala. So there is a third character that's required to be invested in in order to get the best benefit from these two characters. Where Imperial Remnants, it's three right off the bat. But... They work as the team, right? That is the team. Similar like the Queen Amidala, Master Quagon. Like, that's the team. This is the team we're looking at here. Now, to be fair to each of these, this team is far easier to craft because there's more Galactic Republic characters. Down here, there's not nearly as many Imperial Remnants. And they don't like Imperial Remnants who have the leadership tag. So that means no Moff Gideon, no Dark Trooper Moff Gideon. And they don't really like... Uh, death trooper or dark trooper sorry because it, they call out non-droid so you're really stuck with scout death uh or i guess tie fighter death and stormtrooper as the other options here at the moment so again a little bit easier to make the queen amidala team with the fourth and the fifth but she is a conquest unit that many people might not have access to so i just want to call it that you're going to be investing in three characters for either one of these teams regardless just the level depends on whether you're building queenie or you're going for these guys now in terms of hey like what's their use in the game so obviously with the battle for naboo raid right now padawan obi-wan master qui-gon heavily involved there where the um imperial remnants 
they are required for GL Ahsoka at Relic 7 already. And I find that very interesting because Relic 7 is, you know, the, the Relic tier for rewards. So if you're investing in GL Ahsoka, you're going to be building these characters anyway. And I think that's going to be a massive difference right now. We don't know the future of Padawan Obi-Wan Master Qui-Gon after the raid. All we know is that the Duel of the Fates event will still happen. But we know that even if the Imperial Remnants aren't necessary for this next raid, they are Galactic Legend requirements and they're required to be Relic 7. So the real question with the Imperial Remnants is, do you take them to Relic 7 or Relic 9? Right? That's the only question we really ask here. With the Duel of the Fates characters, it's, okay, do I invest in them at all? And what Relic level do I take them to? So, you know, there's a there's a distinct difference here. Them being Galactic Legend requirements makes the Imperial Remnants a lot more, I would say, justifiable. Because you're going to build them no matter what. So, I do want to mention that that is a big thing here. You guys will kind of notice the trend with that, right? Now, in terms of the return on your investment, hey, how are you going to get your rewards back from this? You have a much faster return on your investment from Duel of the Fates. It's only two characters comparative to three. It's a much faster relic return on your investment as well because they have those three relic tiers. They've got the lower relic tier, the relic seven and eight tier, and then the relic nine tier. In the Imperial Remnant Assault Battle, you only had two relic tiers, so it's a slower process. There's more characters. But there is Kyra Tech return on your investment. Eventually, you will make back the Kyra Tech you spent on these characters. And that is significant, particularly for a lot of you who are in that part of the game where Kyra Tech is a huge bottleneck. Having this, now again, it's going to take you a long time to get there, but thinking that, hey, I'm going for GL Ahsoka, I build these guys, I'm going to be able to get extra Kyra Tech. I mean, who doesn't like that? Now, they also are slower because, like I said, at that Relic 9 tier, there's not only three of them, so your timeline is increased, but you can get Omicron drops. And again, I would assume it's an equal percentage of that kind of happening, right? Of like, uh, there's five Omicrons, five Gerda keypads, and five Droid Brains. So if you have a 33% chance at Omicron, Omicron drops, realistically, every year, you can expect to get a full Omicron, a bonus Omicron per year from this event. But that means that you're only getting four drops of Gerda keypads and four drops of Droid Brains which means that it's going to be about three years before you notice a return on the Relic 9 materials that you spent for this assault battle. So I'm not trying to, you know, the wording I want to use here, I'm not trying to say that um, it's not worth it to Relic 9 these characters, but don't look at it as a, I'm going to get them super fast like we did with Duel of the Fates, because Duel of the Fates, you're going to get six of either the Droid brains are good at keypads, and then you're like immediately getting back the next one. So just bear that in mind that the return on your investment is going to be a lot slower for the remnant assault battle, but at least to the Relic 7 tier, again, Galactic Legend requirements. So again, you know, that's a pretty, again, we're going to keep, we're going to keep kind of referencing that. So kind of, you know, wrapping into here, the best overall investment is absolutely going after the Imperial Remnant one. That's a much better investment, particularly just looking at the Relic 7 tier. From a Relic 7 tier perspective, the better investment is 1,000% the Remnants. You have to build them to get Ahsoka. So, like, you're going to do it no matter what. You may as well do it and get additional rewards along the way. Right? Like, 1,000%. I don't care that it's three of them. That's a much smarter investment. of You can get the same rewards, but work towards a Galactic Legend where, those, where these two right now not needed for anything in the game so that's a really big important note there right that your best investments absolutely these guys and remember in those assault battles in that in that rewards that we were showing there you get character shards in the first two tiers of this um event so it, it there is a path to increasing the amount of shards you get over the period of time right now the Relic 9 tier, this is where things get interesting. If you're an early game player and you're like, I have to do one of these to Relic 9, Phil. I have to. Which one's smarter? And er if you're in the earlier parts of the game, it is much smarter to go after Duel of the Fates for the Relic 9 resources. Your return on investment is a lot faster. 
you're only investing in two of them and while you're not getting omicrons you're also not delaying how quickly you'll get the return on the materials that you spent so i think for you for a player who's bottlenecked by hey i can't be spending a crazy amount of relic eights and a crazy amount of relic nines duel of the face begins to make a lot more sense there if you are a tip of the spear type player or you're pretty far in the end game the imperial remnant assault battle at relic nine makes way more sense because of the omicrons you think at that top level what separates accounts datacrons mods and omicrons so any extra omicrons that you can get over your opponent is always an advantage so i you know i got a, a player like um you know shitstorm who's you know one of the guys in my discord you guys can always tag him he's really awesome uh, now he's gonna get flooded with them um guys like arnold and you know zareth and um thinking through like you know sanjita and calvin where their accounts are it's they're a bit closer to that tip of the spear where for them maybe relic nine isn't as much of a bottleneck but getting an extra omicron could be a big deal and i'd say that i'm kind of on the fence with this i'm looking at it and i really need to think through what the rest of ahsoka's requirements are and how they fit into my plans to move forward but i think for most players you can kind of say skip the relic nine tiers regardless because you can't get to relic eight but if you do have relic nines and you're thinking which one makes more sense ask yourself the question do more relic nine mats help you or do more omicrons help you and, and really think about that like how much of an impact do those omicrons truly have on your account so that's the end of the video guys let me know your thoughts hopefully this helps you kind of understand how i view these assault battles i think they are a great change to the game i think they're a great addition they're rewarding us for investing in these new teams and you know i look at this and honestly i believe that the best thing that you can do is get these guys into that relic seven territory for both of them i think investing in the relic sevens either way is a smart decision because they're good characters they're going to make good teams you need them for stuff but more importantly i say, I say that not more importantly but you're going to get bonus rewards that otherwise you wouldn't have access to so you're getting good stuff and you're getting rewarded for it i mean it's a win-win for everybody but you guys let me know what you think are you planning to take these guys where are you going relic seven relic nine waiting until they're you know a lot more accessible love to hear from you like subscribe i love you all may the force be with you and i'll see you the next one cheers my friends